Trevor Landau. Uh, Alex stole most of what I was going to say about my library, but thanks for that. Um, just teasing. Uh, I work for Condé Nast um, on the platform team, uh, where I do mostly Node.js, uh, working on the APIs for all the brands there. Um, since we're on the note of saying where we're from, I'm actually, I live in Connecticut, home of the three worst cities in America, uh, so we got, got that going for me. Um, work in New York, though, I commute every day. Not so bad, actually, uh, though I'd like to move here. Uh, I also co-organize the NYC HTML5 meetup with John Paul and uh, Joe Seppi, who are somewhere over here. Well, Joe's over there. Um, if you're interested, in, uh, check it out, nychtml5.com, and there's also a meetup page. Uh, our next meetup is actually May 14th, uh, so if you're a local or just in town, come check us out. It's a lot of fun. Find me around the web at trevorlandau.net, uh, Twitter, trevor underscore landau, and github.com slash landau for, uh, if you're interested in my repositories. As mentioned previously, uh, here's isjs, a predicate library. Check it out, uh, landau.github.io slash is. Let me know what you think. Um, and you may have noticed I have a space background, not quite as good as Jen's uh, grandma wallpaper, but uh, a lot of uh, inspiration came from Cosmos revamped series. Uh, by show of hands, anyone following this? Just curious. So anyone who has their hands down needs to check it out because it's it's really awesome, educational, fun, and graphics are uh, pretty amazing. And my slide deck, because of that, is now space themed. So let me know if you can't see anything. Um, so what is a successful module? Um, well, before I go answer that question, which is going to be the rest of this talk, uh, we can check out a couple successful modules that are out there. Um, we have jQuery, which has been around for quite some time, obviously, handlebars, et cetera. Um, and these particular libraries cover large domain, uh, domain spaces that we developers frequently need. We need to build an HTTP server in Node. We have Express.js, it's already there for us. Um, but we're going to go beyond these ideas because sometimes our domain is smaller or sometimes our modules don't do as much um, that everyone doesn't necessarily need. Um, but at the same time, you need to inform people about these libraries when they do come across them. So this is a higher level talk, so you can go to sleep if you need to. Um, it's not too technical. By the way, whoever makes these logos needs to help out Node.js because if we don't, we're going to get stuck with substacks forever, which his new one is awesome, actually. Uh, I have it here. So we're going to go beyond the big idea of supporting browser, cross browsers or creating servers. Because, for instance, like my library, it's just a predicate library, and not everyone needs it. Um, and I've heard from people that it's too large for the browser even, um, because you frequently only need a few things from it. Um, so we're going to talk about open sourcing a library um, and how we can make that library stable. How can we can explore it and make it, uh, people understand how to use it and how to support the community around it? And finally, how do we get it out there? Um, and many of these ideas actually work for uh, you to decide if you want to use a library in your project. Might be splash track. So, what does it take to open source a project? Many of you probably already know how to do this. Um, and we can do this on, uh, by putting our module on GitHub. And if you haven't heard of GitHub before, it's at a high level, pretty much a website for hosting uh, your Git repository. So we can take a look at it here. Uh, we can see that uh, you get a directory listing of the root of your project. Um, there's some statistics there, and you can, the equivalent of following a project and some other, uh, other great tools that can help you manage your project. Specific, um, some of the best tools are allowing people to contribute through a pull request feature, uh, a fork pull request feature. Um, so anyone can just commit to your project and you can analyze it there. It also has issue tracking. So if someone can file bugs on your module if they find one. Um, and of course you can put any features you hear so people can see how your project is coming along. Further, we actually have a contributions uh, uh, or sorry, they have the graphs uh, analytics tab for seeing how actively this project is being monitored. So uh, imagine you find a great module on GitHub, but you see that was last uh, updated three years ago. Perhaps this is not a good idea to use in my project because it has no support. So make sure you check for uh, if this module is being actively developed. 
If you know all this um, and you don't necessarily care about getting your module open source, it's actually a lot of fun just to try and keep your uh, record of commits going and um, it's a lot of fun just to uh, put your code out there on the web for people to find and you also get a cool graph and you can show off that I have been coding every single day for the past 23 days. Um, but because we're JavaScript developers, we can actually go further than GitHub and we can get our stuff on NPM. If you haven't heard of NPM, uh, most Node.js developers have because we've been using it for quite some time now. Uh, NPM is a package manager for uh, Node modules. And with NPM, we get a standard way to package our modules, which I feel browser uh, modules don't necessarily have. There's no versioning in those uh, in a standard way. Um, so here's the npmjs.org landing page where we can actually learn about new libraries that are popular or uh, used fre uh, frequently by other libraries, such as underscore, which is the most popular here. Uh, a lot of people are using it. Um, and we can um, then search for particular libraries. Um, so maybe I'm looking for a Gulp plugin, so I can just search Gulp and maybe even add more keywords to that, like templating. And I can find that a lot of people have uh, downloaded this particular module itself. And I can actually dive into those even deeper and get more insight into this, into this module. Um, I, I can see that there's a Git repository that I can link to if I find any issues with it or uh, if there's any bugs that are currently open. I can see what dependencies it has, which gives me more of an advantage because now I can actually check out those dependencies and see how useful they would be for me in some of my projects. Maybe not necessarily Gulp, but I could use these uh, other ones that it uses for my work. Um, and we can see how many people are using it to uh, discern, is this actually a good idea to use in my project because a lot of people are using it. We can go further. We can actually look at the module author and see what other packages he has because maybe I like the work that Fractal does. So from that, I can find more of this person's particular work. Now, if you're a browser developer, don't worry because there's a way that you can actually use this too uh, and it's called Browserify. There's a t uh, this is actually uh, Substack's newest one. It's really good, I think. Um, Browserify allows you to write note style modules and then uh, use them directly in the browser with one little command. And the command looks just like this. Uh, that little command right there will just take your node module and package it up to be used in the browser. And you can, use, and you can create, uh, you can make your own module actually sit as a standalone module um, that you can actually, it will automatically wrap it in a universal module definition which is just a basic way of saying if you're in the browser, set some value on the window object, or if you're using require.js, uh, 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 use the module exporting way that it does, or otherwise you can just use it as node. As node. Um, on that note, I think it's time, and this is, I think it's a bold saying, I think it's, this is time uh, that everyone just ditches Bower and any other package managers and just go straight for NPM because it's just this easy and we can all share our modules uh, in a standard, for, uh, standard way. So let's talk about stability. In order to make your uh, project stable, stable, we have to do a few things. And the reason this is important is because I need to know that your module is going to, do, uh, is going to work as it is intended and I can, and I can actually um, get more information out of, out, of, out of this as well. So the first stop is a static analysis tool. And this is JSHint, which I think most of us are familiar with, or hopefully are. Um, there's also JSLint, which was I, probably the original linter for JavaScript. Um, and this tool allows us to set a toggleable set of rules that can run across, that will analyze our code and tell us if any of these rules are, are being broken. So from this, we can uh, uh, conform to a style, and we can also reduce bugs. So the static analysis tool can do something like tell us we should be using use strict in all our files, or maybe we're using this context in the, in the incorrect fashion. Um, this isn't enough. Uh, obviously, this doesn't tell us if our code is working. So we need to use something that can run unit tests. And unit tests are probably hands down the best way to feel uh, to discern if my project works. So unit tests will say, for any given input, I'll always have the same output. 
And we can hook into this as well um, to help our development process by using continuous integration. And continuous integration will run our test anytime someone makes, uh, or sorry, uh, for Travis CI, which is uh, this continuous integration tool, uh, it actually hooks right into your GitHub uh, uh, modules or repositories. And from that, anytime you merge to master or some branch or if someone makes a pull request, you'll actually be able to see directly in GitHub that this code is passing. Um, and we can actually go even further by adding code coverage around our tool, or around our, our code, which will help us figure out, okay, so maybe this person only wrote one line for a test, and they have many more methods beyond that. The code coverage tool will instrument the code to say, you missed this particular area uh, of code through when your unit tests ran. So as your unit tests run, maybe you have a try-catch statement, but you never wrote a test for the catch. So the code coverage tool, as it instruments your code, will be aware that it didn't run through this path of code, and it'll highlight it and tell you, oh, you didn't do this, and it'll tell you um, you had like 95% code coverage, for instance. Um, and you can set usually thresholds on this that will actually hook with Travis CI that will tell you that this particular thing is failing. And this is a good way to uh, get people to always write tests for your code if they submit something, because I, I've seen it before where people will submit code and they will say, uh, the, the module author will say, can you please write tests for this? But the person might not know that because they don't see this green uh, uh, area that's uh, flashing that says if my code is working. I um, forgot to mention, um, back on Travis CI, yeah, you also get this nice little badge you see in the top corner there. Uh, it says build passing. This is a nice little badge you can throw in, on your readmes on GitHub. Um, which we'll see a little bit later, uh, that will help you just say, oh, what? great, All the, this, this module is good to use, I don't have to immediately just throw it away. So if you see the build failing, close the tab, you're done with it. Or maybe bookmark it for later until someone fixes it. Or maybe you can fix it. This is a pulsar, by the way, if you didn't know what it was. So now that your code is stable, we need to make it explorable as well. And the first stop is a nice detailed readme. AsyncJS does this fantastically, I think. I use it quite frequently in my node code. And if you notice, the very first thing is that build passing badge that I mentioned. And now I know that async is in a good state to use, provided by, uh, followed by a short description. And the short description just tells me a little bit about the module. Uh, and what's best of all is I can see how to use it almost immediately in some quick examples. Uh, following the rest of this is uh, some more details into the API itself. Um, and you could even have other, other, other things in there as well that we'll, again, see later. If the readme is not enough, there's also a wiki on GitHub that you can hook into and uh, maybe get a little more structure. Uh, D3 does this extensively, though I think they should move beyond the wiki um, and do kind of what underscore JS does and create a full website. And so the advantage to this is I now have two scrolling panes and I can see the entire underscore API from the left column and look through it and jump around, which you need to do a lot in underscore because you're frequently combining uh, functions. Such as, and, and another great way to use these functions that you're playing with is to throw the library into the, into the website so now I can actually play with it. I can just compose functions however I please with the library there. But even this sometimes is not enough because your, uh, your, your module might be huge. Ember.js is a huge tool, and if you just had, here's the API on how to do it, you would have no idea how to use this thing. Or maybe it would take you a while to get that, to get revved up anyway. And so they go into a detailed guide on how to use individual components of the, of the module and how to work with them together, and even provide some uh, video tutorials uh, of how to build a basic Ember app. Um, there might be more around the documentation as well. React and Ember also do a, a blog, so you can see the activity behind this module. And with this, we can say, this is how people in the community are using this now, and this is where we're moving to. Now, obviously, this doesn't apply to all modules because you could have a module that does a function, so all you really need is a small readme with some examples. Um, but if you're looking to build a big one and get it out there, this is a great way to go. Um, or even provide an examples directory, like React has been pushing really, uh, really hard because people are 
not necessarily aware how to use React in large applications. So they're sharing how to do it through examples and you can have uh, an array of examples in, your, in the project itself that show you how to use it in a basic level and, and beyond. This is a sombrero galaxy, pretty cool. Does it look better up there? Just curious. Oh, that's all right. Uh, next we're gonna talk about supporting the community around your module. So a great way to do this is just have a Twitter account for your module, maybe, and you can just tweet, here's some changes that come up if you're a big Twitter user. Um, but more so, you need to tell people how you can contribute to your library. Um, if you're a mature project such as jQuery, they have a core team and they have a standardized way to how you can contribute to it because it's not as simple as I'm just going to make this pull request for this small module that I'm using. Further, you should provide a change log. And this is usually in the root of your project. Angular, this is uh, Angular's change log here and they provide the semantic version of, of the most recent uh, changes and uh, the bug fixes, performance improvements, and it's nice to get those details about what has actually changed. And GitHub actually has milestones. I'm not sure when those came out. Um, when, I, when I started at Condé Nast, uh, we, we used HappyJS there, and I was looking for the change log one day and on, because they have an extremely fast uh, release cycle, and like every week and a half or so, there's like a new version. Um, and they use GitHub milestones, which allow you to link issues to specific uh, versions of the module itself. I find this actually to be sometimes confusing, especially for newer uh, developers. Maybe they don't understand the lingo, per se. So it's nice to have a, a, a change log in this in tandem, you know, because this also will help you with project management. This is a, the Crab Nebula. It's a exploded star. So now that your project is nice and stable and people know how to uh, contribute to it, it's time to get your module out there. I always like to go to Twitter. Um, I'm just trying to convince everyone to go on Twitter if you have not yet because uh, although it's not all Kim Kardashian uh, tweets, it's also a thriving tech community around languages and libraries. Um, so because I'm not a prolific Twitter, uh, Twitter user, I have, you know, I don't have thousands of followers like some people. Um, it's not as easy for us to get it out there. So you need to use, make use of the hashtags, uh, and maybe some people will say they like this sort of thing. So I always hashtag Node.js and JavaScript, or maybe it's specific to uh, Angular or Backbone or something, and just put it, uh, just put, it, put the hashtag for there for that, and people will find it because people do use hashtag searches. Uh, I do myself. Like I said, it's not that easy. I asked people to retweet this, and th at least three people saw it, and they favored it instead. I was a little, <laughs> this was a little confusing for me, uh, because the retweet button and uh, favorite don't look alike at all. Um, maybe you guys can retweet for me. Uh, but don't give up, it doesn't matter, who cares? Just do it again, send out the, send out the word. But a better way, is to go uh, talk to the Cooper Press, which runs JS Weekly, Node Weekly, and a bunch of other newsletters, and just send them an email about your library. Uh, I did this a um, month ago or so, maybe two months now. Um, and I, I, just, I just told uh, Peter Cooper through email. I said, hey, Pete, I call him Pete. Uh, here's this library I've been working on. Maybe people would be interested. Please include it. Sure enough, uh, he answered back in a couple days and said, I'll check it out. We'll see if we can fit it in there and was in next week, it was in the next one, and I had uh, uh, 30 plus stargazers that day, so uh, people got to see it. It was awesome. Uh, we can actually do even more. We can go on IRC, if you're familiar with IRC, or not familiar with IRC, it's uh, this old application layer pro protocol that uh, people have been using for ages, and uh, more specifically, there is a free node server uh, that is dedicated to open source libraries and, and projects, and, and with this, uh, you, you can just find a room that's JavaScript. It's kind of it's kind of like Twitter in that sense. Like you can just do hashtag JavaScript on here or hashtag React, and you can just find a room full of people. I think there was about a thousand people in the JavaScript room here, 
at about 5 p.m. yesterday, and or the day before. Um, and, and so someone's going to see it. And I had a couple people answer to me right away uh, that they had some concerns about it for the browser. Uh, I said I mostly use it in Node, but uh, you know, who cares if someone says they don't like it? There's going to be someone out there who definitely likes it. So don't take anything to heart. And another great way is to present at a conference. Uh, Pete Hunt of React has been doing this very actively uh, for, for quite some time. And uh, ever since the release of React, it's, uh, I remember people groaning at JSConf last year at the XML uh, note they made there. Um, but since then, he's been at pretty much every conference. You can just search him on YouTube, search YouTube and go Pete Hunt, and you'll see React, 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 React. Uh, and it's a great way to get out there. I think it's providing some of their success. Uh, and what I've been talking about is the whole time. So now all of you know about it. Uh, and I've also been educating you how to get your open source library out there. Um, so it's a double win. I'm Trevor Landau. Uh, you can find links to all the libraries I was talking about at this, link, at this URL, uh, github.com slash landau slash prezos. And there's an empire.js directory in there. Thank you.